everybody. Welcome back to the channel. On this episode, I'm going to build a seven by 10 foot collapsible awning rack mounted on my Toyota Tacoma. I will also build a custom bag for it and show you how it all works and how I put it all together. This is kind of a long video. It's not step-by-step -step process, but it should give you enough inspiration and ideas to build your own awning. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching. So I needed to build a rack to hold an awning on my front runner load bars. This is the mounting system that I decided to build for my specific front runner load bars. This awning can be mounted to any rack with L brackets or any other way you decide to mount it to your vehicle. I fabricated these feet out of some hunks of steel that I had laying around. I needed them to sit flush on my load bars so I countersunk the holes. These are actually some old lightweight steel table legs that have a great mounting system for the base that I will mount my feet to. Again, this is for my specific front runner load bars. The awning system will be able to be mounted to any rack, L bracket, roof rack that may work for you. Please skip ahead if you're not interested in my rack system. Next, I'm gonna measure the height that I want my awning to be. I'm six foot five, so I decided to make the awning about six four. Six six was just way too tall above my truck. Before my final installation, I'll put red Loctite on these threads to make sure it does not come loose. As you can see, it's a very solid connection. I will paint these with black Plasti Dip before installing them on my truck. Moving on to the awning. This aluminum C-channel will be my main awning beam. This will house all of the components of our awning. The tarp, the legs, the arms will all be inside of this C-channel. Here I'm cutting the C-channel to the specific length for my tarp. My tarp is 7 feet wide by 10 feet long. Always mock up your designs before drilling your holes. It's the best way to ensure that everything goes together properly. Now that I have my beam and my legs laid out where I want them, I'm marking the C-channel to drill the mounting holes. I originally was going to go with two small bolts in each leg, but ended up deciding to go with one larger stainless steel bolt. I tried to make my bolt hole tolerances as tight as possible so that they would not come loose and rattle. In the finished product, I actually added large gauge washers here and cut the bolt off. Next is the hinge system I made. I found these welders tabs at my metal supply store. These tabs will allow the aluminum tubing to be pushed out far enough that it doesn't bind on the back of the C-channel. This is a mock-up I made of my hinge system. Always make 
a mock-up before you commit so you know it's going to work before you start drilling holes. This hinge consists of stainless steel bolts and washers, the welding tabs, and some plastic spacers. Next up is the telescopic arms. My tarp was 10 feet long, so I needed to have arms that reached out 10 feet. I found these aluminum tubes at my metal supply store. They were surprisingly cheap, nine and $11 each. Here I'm drilling the holes for my hinge system at the back of the larger aluminum pipe. I thought it would be a good idea to add a bushing inside of the aluminum tube so that the shape of the tube would not get crushed when tightening down the hinge. So I ground down this plastic bushing to fit inside of the aluminum tube. Next, I'll chamfer the edge of the aluminum tube so it does not bind on the C-channel when the hinge is in motion. When you're sure you have everything right, cut off this bolt. As you can see, there's a top side arm and a bottom side arm so that they lay together in the C-channel. Here is a good view of why you need to chamfer the edge of the pipe. Next up is the crossbar and leg for the front of the awning. This is a three-way connection that will hold the telescopic arm, the crossbar, and the leg that holds up the awning. I sacrificed this paddle bit because it was the perfect size for my aluminum extension arm. The blue extension arms will fit in the front of this, as well as this extendable leg that I got off of Amazon. Now I'm going to drill the hole for the leg. It's part of the three-way connection that connects the crossbar, the leg, and the blue extension arm. The crossbar piece I purchased at Home Depot, it's one inch by one inch box tubing. Make sure you measure all of your holes carefully so that the three components line up. The pin from the leg will go through this blue extension arm and the crossbar. Here you can see the three components together, a silver crossbar, the black legs, and the blue extension arm. As I mentioned before, my arms needed to extend to 10 feet. The blue aluminum tubing only comes in six foot lengths. So I decided to add a spring clip. This spring clip will allow me to put tension on the tarp and lock the extending blue arm into place. Give your hole enough room so that the spring clip can move freely inside of the tube. This spring clip happened to be too wide to slide into the tube. 
so I had to grind it down to allow it to fit inside of the tube. Here I'm drilling the other hole in the larger diameter tubing. grind down the spring clip so that it will fit inside of the small tubing. You will need to make sure that you line up the button and the hole and have a push stick that you can push the spring clip down the inside of the tubing. If you drilled your hole correctly, once you slide it down, it will pop into place. Here you can see the spring action of the button. When the two pipes come together, they need a spacer so they're not rattly and wobbly inside of each other. I use this plastic lightweight pipe that I found as a spacer. Here you can see how the two pieces of pipe come together and how the spring clip will hold it tight. I use some stainless steel bolts to mount the tarp tabs to the beam and some industrial strength Velcro across the top. To take the slack out of the middle of the tarp, I use this parachute cord with an adjustable tab to keep it taut. I added these Velcro straps to keep it all tight together when rolled up. You can see from this angle that the awning beam could be easily mounted to any roof rack or other type of rack you have with L brackets or some other type of attachment. I decided I wanted to build my own bag. I would never sewn before, so I decided just to go for it. I borrowed a sewing machine from my sister, bought this waterproof canvas from Amazon, and designed my own bag. I wanted my bag to be tight and compact. No extra loose material flapping in the wind while driving on the freeway. My material was a little short, so I had to sew two pieces together to make the correct seven foot length that I wanted. While it's probably not the prettiest sewing you've seen, I think it will be plenty strong as I double stitched everything, including this sleeping bag zipper that I purchased off of Amazon. I learned this from watching somebody else build a similar bag, but when you sew the ends of the bag together, sew them inside out. So when you turn the bag right side out, you have a nice clean seam.
Here's the finished bag mounted on the awning and on the truck. If I had to do it again, I would probably add an inch to each end of the bag just to give a little bit more room. I added this diagonal aluminum brace to give the front of the awning a bit more stability. These are some custom LED lights that I added to the inside of the C-channel. 